So this is a, just a short video to introduce you to ATP and what it is and its importance and role in exercise. So ATP, those letters ATP stand for adenosine triphosphate. And adenosine triphosphate is a compound which is stored in the body, specifically in the muscles, that has to be broken down to enable muscles to contract. Without ATP, there can be no contraction of muscles. The body cannot use any other compound to enable muscular contraction. So ATP is extremely important in exercise um, because it is the underlying compound that's necessary for muscular contraction. In terms of its structure, ATP, as the name suggests, um, consists of three phosphates, hence triphosphate, attached to an adenine group. And you'll see on the picture on the screen um, a, a simplification, a simplified version of the structure of ATP. Um, and the lines between uh, the letters um, represent chemical bonds. And those chemical bonds are essentially where energy is stored. So energy, these chemical bonds, hold this molecule together to form ATP, a single adenine group with three phosphates attached by chemical bonds. Now, during exercise, what happens is the final phosphate, the third phosphate along from the adenine group, is broken off chemically. And as it is broken off, that bond that was there originally holding it onto the second phosphate, that energy, that bond, is now available, that energy is released and is now available to drive muscular contraction. The compound that is left behind when we break off one of those phosphates is known as ADP, which is simply adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two, tri meaning three, adenosine triphosphate, when a phosphate is broken off, becomes adenosine diphosphate. But the key thing is that the energy that is released is useful and used in muscular contraction. But there's a problem. In the body and in the muscle, there's only enough ATP stored there to last or to drive contraction for about six seconds, maybe even a little less than that, up to about six seconds. So the body has to recreate ATP from the ADP that's left behind. It has to come up with some way of reattaching that phosphate back on to the ADP to recreate ATP. Now the technical term that you'll need to use for this is resynthesis. The resynthesis of ATP occurs here. And you'll see again on the picture, the red line represents a chemical bond that has been resynthesized, recreated to, a, to reattach that phosphate back on to ADP to resynthesize ATP. Why do we need to resynthesize ATP? Well, I've already said it's only ATP that can be used to drive muscular contraction. We can't use anything else. So we, we have to resynthesize ATP. And the body actually has three different ways in which it can resynthesize ATP. Uh, and depending on the intensity and duration uh, of the exercise, that is the demand for ATP, for the resynthesis of ATP, the fuel sources that are available within the body, and also whether or not oxygen is available, those things will determine which pathway or which system the body chooses to use to re-synthesize ATP. The body has a choice of three. And these are the three pathways which we, uh, we, which we know as the energy systems. The first possibility, um, the three pathways, and we'll look at these in more detail in other videos, the three opportunities or the three possibilities are, number one, the ATP PC pathway. That's the first way that the body might use to restore ATP from ADP so that it can be reused, used again. 
So we might resynthesize ATP through the ATP PC system. And we sometimes call that the alactic pathway because no lactate is produced. Secondly, the body can use the lactic acid pathway or the lactate pathway. And thirdly, the body can use the aerobic pathway. And each of those systems uses a different method to take that phosphate and return it to, onto the molecule to resynthesize or restore ATP. And we'll look at each of those in turn separately in later videos. So that's it. That's why ATP is important. And that is the role that it plays in muscular contraction. Thanks for watching.